Hello and welcome to this online service of worship brought to you by Wesley Freedom United Methodist Church. Today, we're taking a look at King David. We pray with him against evil, both outside of ourselves and within. If you've been connecting with God through these online services, we want to hear from you. Leave a comment on this video to let us know you're here, like our page, and send us an email so that we can be praying for you. No matter where you are joining us from today, know that God is with you, and we hope that you will experience God's presence during this service. So now, let's lift our voices to God and call God into our hearts in the song, I Need Thee Every Hour. Won't you pray with me? God, we do need you every hour, in joy and in pain. Lord, we come to you today with all of who we are, all of our joys, all of our pains, all the mixed up messiness of this, our life on earth. We give you thanks for this world, for your creation, that creation that you've charged us with tending and keeping and given us to enjoy. We thank you for staying with us. You are God who never abandoned us. 
even when we turn away from you. You spoke to us through the patriarchs and the prophets, and finally you revealed yourself in flesh and blood in Christ Jesus our Lord. God, we need you now. More than ever, we need you. So we pray that you would protect us, Lord, from the harm of the world, from any wickedness that seeks to do us ill, and any temptations that would lead us astray. God, be our guide and our guardian. You who created the human body and knit us together in the womb, and in whom we find the fullness of health, send your Holy Spirit upon this world to heal all those who suffer under disease, especially those who suffer with the coronavirus, and all those for whom it has now turned into a chronic lifelong disability. Uphold with your strength all those who care for a loved one and all doctors, nurses, and medical staff in our hospitals and clinics. Grant peace, dear God, to all the teachers, the school staff, the parents, and the students who feel bound by a limited number of possibilities before them and are anxious for their own health and the health of their families. Receive into your presence, God, all who have died this past week, Grant them blessed rest and let light perpetual shine upon them. Surround their families with your presence and let them feel your grace. God, we lift up these petitions along with our constant prayers for the poor, the imprisoned, and the oppressed who are your especially favored children above all others. This is our prayer to you, Father Almighty, through your Holy Spirit and in the name of of your Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who when he was on earth taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. My name is Susan Steiner, and I will be reading this morning's scripture from the Psalms, Psalm number 5. Listen to my words, Lord. Consider my lament. Hear my cry for help, my King and my God, for to you I pray. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I lay my requests before you and wait expectantly. For you are not a God who is pleased with wickedness. With you evil people are not welcome. The arrogant cannot stand in your presence. You hate all who do wrong. You destroy those who tell lies. For bloodthirsty and deceitful you, Lord, detest. But I, by your great love, can come into your house in reverence I bow down toward your holy temple. Lead me, Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. Not a word from their mouth can be trusted. Their heart is filled with malice. Their throat is an open grave. With their tongues they tell lies. Declare them guilty, O God. Let their intrigues be their downfall. Banish them for their many sins for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's good to see all of you again. I welcome you back to my garden. Um, it's been a few months since you've been here. And so where we were growing peppers and zucchinis, we're now uh, growing pumpkins. Um, and we're just enjoying a beautiful day and the opportunity to be with the Lord uh, in his bountiful creation. Uh, as I prepare to bring you the word today, I invite you to pray the prayer of St. Patrick. Uh, which has been surrounding us and strengthening us throughout this fall season. If you would pray with me, Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, 
Christ to comfort and restore me. Christ on my right hand, Christ on my left, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in the eyes of all who see me, Christ in the ears of you who hear me, Christ in the hearts of all who love me, Christ in the mouth of friend and stranger. As we pray this prayer, I pray that God will use these words to bless and to challenge and to inform your journey with Christ. We have been praying this prayer often as a way to, to invite the fullness of Jesus to be a shield, a fence around us, if you will. We find in this prayer the strength of Christ, the presence of Christ, the power of Christ. Each week we've been looking at one of the stanzas of the breastplate of St. Patrick. And this week we bind ourselves to Christ, acknowledging that there is much that comes at us, much that would seek to distort or destroy our lives. In today's verse of St. Patrick's breastplate, we bind ourselves to Christ against the demon snares of sin the vice that gives temptation force, the natural lusts that war within, the hostile men that mar our course, or few or many, far or nigh, in every place and in all hours, against their fierce hostility, I bind to me Christ's holy powers. As we hear these lyrics, they're not as comforting or reassuring as most we have shared. They give us that uneasiness of recognizing that evil lurks, that evil lurks around us and evil can prey within us. In these stanzas, in these lyrics, we seek Christ's protection from the evil that can so tragically disrupt and even destroy our lives. We want to protect ourselves from this evil, from the evil that could harm us, harm our loved ones, our community, or any of God's people. I chose to stand inside my garden fence today. Those who first planted this garden, they built this fence, I inherited it. No doubt they put up this fence to keep the critters, the varmints, from coming in and eating their vegetables or trampling their flowers. Unfortunately, I learned in the thick of summer that this fence isn't quite significant enough. Some critter, I'm guessing a raccoon, snuck in through the fence. It didn't take it down, just climbed through or jumped over and ate every single ear of corn we had grown. On the very night before we had planned a picnic to share that corn with our family. If I ever catch that little robber, it will be a bad day for him. But like this garden, we are wise to recognize that our lives can be profoundly impacted by those forces that lurk around us, that prey upon us. We can be impacted, our lives tremendously disrupted or changed by the hostility, the greed, the prejudice, the ignorance, the sheer meanness of others who share this planet with us. And so we're encouraged to pray by St. Patrick, who had known slavery and grand opposition. We are encouraged us to pray for Christ to protect us from all those outside forces that could mar our lives. It also reminds me of King David, the author of so many of our Psalms. David was not shy to pray that God would protect him from those who connived against him. In Psalm 5, David writes, Lead me, Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. Not a word in their mouth, God, can be trusted. Their heart is filled with malice. Their throat is an open grave. With their tongues, they tell us lies. Declare them guilty, God. Let their intrigues be their downfall. Banish them from their many sins, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you, God, be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, Lord, that those who love your name will rejoice 
in you. David recognizes a profound difference between those who are plotting evil and those who are loving the Lord. David recognizes that there are many who can influence our lives in ways that can bring us harm. That the decisions, the actions, the words, the systems set up by many can cause us pain, can disrupt the goodness of community, and grieve God's heart. And so we're invited to ask God to protect us from all those who would inflict this pain. David and others throughout the scripture invite us to pray that God will somehow be the downfall of the evil. He says, God, let their intrigues be their downfall. Let their evil be their, de their demise. There is space, friends, in our biblical heritage to pray these kind of prayers. Christians and Jews prayed together while there were Nazi concentration camps. They prayed for God to somehow disrupt Hitler's plots and evil. Throughout the centuries, as persons have been bound by slavery and injustice, many have cried out to God that somehow the evil systems would be dismantled. We are wise to pray for God's protection from the evil around us. Wise to pray, as David did, that God will lead us in righteousness in the face of evil. That we will somehow navigate the minefield of evil and temptation without ourselves becoming a part of the evil we deplore. With Christ, without Christ's intervention, we know what happens to us. We become a part of the injustice. When someone deals with us harshly, we become the harshness. When we are treated unfairly, we become a part of the unfairness. Someone today reminded me, hurt people hurt people. Without the help of Jesus, we who are injured by the evil of others become the very evil we deplore. And so we're wise to pray, lead me in righteousness, Lord. We are wise to pray that God will help us navigate, that God will help us continue to be bound to Christ, that we can be people of grace and forgiveness, that we can be the bold peacemakers, the justice seekers. And as we pray for those outside the fence to get their act together, as we pray for those who have done us harm to be dealt with by God, we might be wise to pray that God will deal with them with mercy, that God will convict their hearts and change their ways, perhaps even using them to become a part of the good in the world. Because someday or another, you and I are gonna realize that we in some weak moment have become a part of the suffering. If we look at David's own life, we realize that the one who prayed for God to get those who are unjust, those who have fallen from God's course, that the one who prayed that became that. In 2 Samuel 11, King David, the author of much of our worship song, he didn't go out to war with the other kings. Out of some identity crisis or boredom or midlife crisis, David talk, takes a walk on the roof and looks in the women's showers. This is what St. Patrick's breastplate identifies as the demon snares of sin. David just got caught in a briar, a briar that would eventually wrap around his feet and trip him and bring him down. We know how this goes. We get snagged by a peak of unplanned pornography, an unsolicited touch from a coworker, a winning $10 raffle ticket, a, a sip of rum during a lonely hour, the demon snares of lust, the demon snares of pride, the demon snares of arrogance, I won't fall down. They brought down even King David. He called that woman into his bed in what we would now understand as a profound misuse of power, perhaps even rape. He 
he abused her. He, as Patrick's prayer warns, that vice that gives temptation force overtook him and forever changed his life and many lives. In a tragic fall from grace, David ends up becoming those he prayed against. He became the hostile men that mar our course. For Uriah the Hittite, the husband of the woman who David took, David would not only be the snare, he would not only be the one to be feared, but the one who would utterly destroy him. David, such a profound example that we shouldn't be only concerned about the evil out there. We should be concerned about the evil in here. For as evil can lurk outside the fence, evil can grow in here as well. While David prayed for God to deal with those folks, perhaps he should have been praying for God to deal with him. Perhaps seeking a deeper relationship with God through which David himself could have withstand his own selfish desires. It seems that David was watching those at the fence while a snake bit him in his own garden. Friends, we are wise to pray often morning, noon, and night, every time evil comes our way or temptation comes from within us, we are wise to pray, Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ to not only comfort and restore me, but Christ to be with me in danger, Christ to be in the mouths of friends and stranger. We can with this prayer invite Jesus to give us eyes to see, eyes to understand what is evil and what is good, hearts to perceive the intentions of those who come our way. Are they coming with a blessing or are they coming to destroy? But as we ask Jesus to be in our eyes and our ears that we will understand the intentions of others, we are wise to be humble enough to ask God to give us eyes to see ourselves to understand our own hearts, our own intentions. Brothers and sisters, we can't carry this fence around to protect us from evil. Even if we could carry this gate, evil could still grab at our ankles or fester in our souls. And so it is through prayer, through a deep abiding relationship with Christ that we can be fortified to recognize evil as it comes, that we won't become a part of the evil in this world, and to recognize the evil that can lurk within us, that we can cry out for God's forgiveness and grace and strength. In Psalm 5, David prayed for protection against the evil in the world, and we can join him in that prayer in Psalm 32, 52, Ian will lead us, Pastor Ian will lead us in a psalm in which we pray with David for God to forgive us for the evil that we have become, for the evil that we have participated in. I hope you will join me in praying, create in me a clean heart, O God. Wash me and I will be clean. Wash me with hyssop and I will be whiter than snow. Brothers and sisters, let us put on the fullness of Christ as a shield to protect us from the evil out there and the evil that could rise from within us, that we can be a part of the blessing, that we can be a part of the good, the peace, the justice in the world. May Christ be with you and Christ within you that you will withstand all the snares of evil and live within Christ's righteous blessing.
When David was faced with the sins of others, he cried out to God for protection. And when David lost his own battles, he cried out to God for forgiveness for his own internal sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us now pray together David's confession in the words of Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me 
and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Be favorable and gracious to Zion, and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with the appointed sacrifices, with burnt offerings and oblations. Then shall they offer young bullocks upon your altar. Merciful Father, I cry out in repentance. Forgive me those things which I have done that I ought not to have done and those things that I have failed to do that you have commanded from all of us. Have mercy on me and forgive me. Forgive all of your children, all of the church, and all persons around the world who look to you for restoration and redemption. In the name of your Son, Christ Jesus our Lord, who died for us, have mercy on us and return us to that state of grace that you have made possible through the waters of baptism and promised to consummate in the world to come. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. If you have not heard it yet today, Hear it now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Let us give glory to God. Amen. While the varmints plotted against us and ate all of our corn, they, they haven't found our pumpkins. I pray that God will protect you, that Christ will be all around you, and the Holy Spirit will make you abundantly good that God's peace and righteousness and blessing will be upon you and yours. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, go in peace and live in Christ's protection. Amen.